Banks and exchanges are taking a keen interest in applying the blockchain to financial markets. But can it really work? The blockchain is a record of asset ownership that underpins Bitcoin. It mixes the worlds of Silicon Valley and Wall Street and could represent a radical departure from long-standing financial networks. At present, when one bank sends money to another, no physical currency changes hands. Banks and settlement systems use central electronic ledgers to track assets. But they can be lamentably slow and often inefficient, relying on fax or manual input. That not only wastes time, but racks up fees. The system is also open to hacking and fraud. Now, the blockchain takes a different approach. Transactions between Bitcoin users are gathered as blocks and broadcast to a network of computers. Those gathering the blocks are known as miners, and they compete to verify them by unscrambling standard cryptographic puzzles derived from their contents. The winner of this race publishes the result to other computers and receives a monetary incentive. A new block is added to the blockchain roughly every 10 minutes. Other computers then verify the work. Now that makes the ledger decentralized and altering it would require changing every copy. Now, proponents say a ledger could simplify this kind of system. Updated in minutes, it would save millions in collateral and settlement costs, while also automating those creaky and expensive back office systems. Collateral could be moved around the system faster to meet new derivatives rules after the financial crisis. Now, some estimate it could save banks 15 to 20 billion dollars by 2022. But the blockchain was never directly aimed at overhauling financial markets. As a result, it contains flaws, critics argue. And computer processing power requires electricity. That's a real world cost. Already, mining is controlled by a small group of actors using huge farms of servers. And that creates potential issues. The longest chain of blocks, that's the one with the greatest sum of work done, is accepted as the ledger. Any actor attempting to modify it would need control of enough computing power to overtake the genuine blockchain as the longest. Now, if an actor controls the majority of the network's computing power, even temporarily, he could alter the ledger. And then it could become difficult to distinguish legally who owns what. Others worry that the blockchain is growing too big and inefficient to deal with an increasing number of transactions. When invalid blocks were recently found on the Bitcoin blockchain, it recommended customers waited for 30 confirmations, and that's roughly five hours, before accepting transactions. Without certainty of legal enforcement of contracts and the security concerns, others accept that the central authority has a role to play. Real world goods, like commodities, also require proof of delivery. And anyway, there is no central ledger in financial markets. Every trade is recorded by at least two counterparties. Moreover, the blockchain is a protocol and doesn't have the ability to identify parties. Banks and customers point out that they must comply with tough rules and money laundering. Then there's the clearing problem. A securities clearinghouse can net down long and short trades from brokers. If the positions cancel each other out, the member has to put up little margin to the clearinghouse. Now, a distributed ledger would require the clearinghouse to settle long and short positions per client, a huge extra burden. Trades would also have to be pre-funded, an issue that has seen countries like Russia move away from same-day settlement. Derivatives clearing is all about managing margin on outstanding contracts. A broker has an incentive to get margin when his contract's in the money, and every incentive to leave things alone when the contracts are in the red. As with any new technology, experimentation abounds. The term blockchain is becoming difficult to define. For instance, there's a growing debate about whether blockchain even needs a digital token like Bitcoin. Some startups are turning to permissioned distributed ledgers, which grants permission to certain actors to access the network, quickly record trades and discover an asset's owner. Companies like Hyperledger don't use blocks, but a more traditional algorithm that already exists. Now, that system could scale and mean transactions could be settled in under 400 milliseconds very quickly. But whether that is still a blockchain is another matter. Critics say at that point, 
distributed ledger technology is less a revolutionary tool and more the next stage of back office IT infrastructure.